and start. Uh, okay, can you quickly give me your technical background and brief about what currently you are doing? Yeah, so basically uh, I have been, uh, I have basically 5.2 years of experience uh, in IT sector, majorly on to Java itself. Uh, I have actually done BTEC in Computer Science and Engineering 2015 pass out. Uh, since the past two years, I have been working with Altron for Cisco on the client location itself. Here actually we are working into networking uh, domain related products. Uh, my current project is something about when you onboard a very huge number of devices within a network, you can actually uh, you know, configure the devices, fetch configurations from the devices. Like for example, you can configure circuits for the data to flow from one node to another. So basically, it's uh, it's a kind of an SDN controller, uh, basically where you can actually control the flow of uh, data within the network. And uh, if you talk about the technology stack, yeah, we are actually working on microservices along with Spring Boot. Um, most of the services Spring Boot are into Spring Boot, apart from a couple of services which are there in GoLang and Python as well. And we, for the inter-service communication, we are using Kafka. Apart from that, uh, we also have REST endpoints exposed in a couple of services for the UI to actually fetch the data from, uh, you know, backend services. And uh, on this unit testing, we are using JUnit along with the uh, Mocketo framework. Apart from that, for the database, we are using MongoDB, NoSQL database. And uh, yeah, for versioning, we are using Git, Jira, Jenkins, etc. for uh, the build pipeline and apart from that for testing and deployment we are using docker containers everything you are using what exactly <laughs> you are exporting okay <laughs> i think maybe you have the similar kind of a uh, what exactly you are exporting are you able to generate or create the pipeline for jenkins no or i just using it no no actually i'm just uh, using it i never uh, created it So you are using Spring Boot, right? Yeah. Okay. So in Spring Boot, what uh, what we can use for transaction management? Yeah. So we are uh, here like uh, using uh, like we are not doing transaction management as such, but you can use either a transactional annotation for that, uh, as far as I know. Apart from that, for uh, this uh, inconsistency purposes, we are actually doing it through optimistic uh, locking approach. Uh, so we do have like versions into our database and uh, for each, each of the entity at entity level and as soon as suppose in, in, if in case multiple threads come to update uh, the same, uh, you know, uh, same record. So into that, uh, there is a version associated with it. So as soon as one update happens, the version automatically gets updated. So if the previous record is having this previous version, it will automatically throw optimistic logging exception as uh, it doesn't have uh, the okay. updated version. Okay. Suppose I am giving a scenario. Suppose you have an enterprise application. Okay. A lot of classes are there. Everything Java based. Java Spring based application. Okay. And in that, uh, now I am asking you to. Uh, I want something like execution time for each method. So basically, when I am saying execution time, it is like uh, you can say what is the start time of when you enter in the method and what is the end time when like you exited from the method. So you can just take the difference of that and then that is will be the execution time of the specific method. This will be required for performance monitoring. So uh, how you can achieve this? What is your thought process on this? Yeah, so basically we will need something to be called just before calling uh, that particular method and at the end uh, after it is calling. So I think we can do this using AOP basically. We can create point cuts. And uh, as soon as the point cut is created for that particular uh, method, it will actually come to that uh, AOP controller. Inside that you can do like, uh, for example, first of all, you calculate the current time, uh, that will be the time, start time basically. And then you can do a join point or proceed that will execute that entire method and then come back to your AOP part. 
again uh, to your advice and then there you can actually you know calculate the current time so you will be able to find the difference between the two likewise that you can actually calculate the Yes, I think there will be a little bit of, uh, of obviously like uh, we are executing two different uh, steps so it will actually land on to your point cut and then uh, it will actually ex uh, calculate the time and then execute the entire thing and then come back to your advice. So yes, definitely there will be some impact um, in, in the response time. Oh, what then what you will suggest then? Uh, in that case, uh, I think uh, if that is the case, uh, we can uh, simply, I mean, either we can log it inside all the methods, but I don't think that will be a good approach if you call, if you talk about uh, of uh, this uh, code quality perspective so that is why i was trying to create a central place where uh, it, it can get locked or otherwise uh, uh, otherwise maybe we can have like uh, we can simply have a map uh, you know that that has a key value pair of the start and end time so as soon as uh, it lands on to a particular uh, method, we actually update the map uh, with the start value and end value and in the end we can actually get the performance. So all the put and get uh, into the map will actually be of O1 uh, complexity. So I think uh, that will not uh, hamper the performance. Anyway, like if you are using before and after then anyways you are going to hit that. Uh, before and after. For your now, I mean point cuts you are using, right? Before yeah, point yeah. cut and after point cut. So, will that impact? So that will come yeah. in picture, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. To do that. Okay. Okay. Anyways, uh, suppose uh, on the similar lines, uh, for the security perspective, I want to log. Uh, basically, lot of now nowadays it is a common practice to get to know like which IP addresses are hitting your application and specifically uh, like for specific IP addresses you can block it or just for tracking purpose you want that thing how you can achieve in your application I know this can be handled at network level as well but if you want to have that extra protection in your application what you can do okay so you basically want to log the IP address uh, through which the request is coming. IP address, I am just giving you an example. Any, uh, I just want to track from where the request is coming or whatever is the coming from the request, what I can do. Yeah, so V actually usually does it uh, at, at uh, the basically gateway level. So uh, as soon as we get uh, the request with certain uh, payload, we have like for example, uh, a user management uh, services specifically deals with things like that. So we usually uh, like uh, for example a request lands on to the gateway and then uh, goes to the service discovery and further uh, you know goes to that user management service. So usually we log all the uh, details uh, related to that over there uh, like uh, I think uh, there is some uh, web security config adapter or something like that which we use uh, for that purpose as well okay uh, in plain plain uh, jQuery application what do you think like what we can use it over here in this scenario okay Uh, if we talk about j 2 e application, so I think uh, that will be having uh, some kind of, uh, you know, request that is coming in request object. So, what I feel is inside that request object, there must be uh, all the details uh, 
of uh, where that request is actually coming from and uh, yeah what what is the source and uh, what are the uh, various uh, kind of uh, input parameters or things that have been uh, actually provided okay last question also not sure question. about it so in web.xml what all things you can uh, what all things are there and what all things you can use and that you are aware of okay so we are talking about web.xml so uh, i think uh, is it uh, no that is server that's what i think Uh, actually, uh, I have like uh, never uh, got a chance. Like there are, I, I know there are multiple filters into it, uh, which uh, you can actually provide. Uh, but uh, yeah, never. Uh, I'm basically working on to Spring Boot application, so we do not uh, okay. use Web dot XML as such. Okay, so you are directly using microservices using Spring Boot like that. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. So REST controllers you are using. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So in REST controller, uh, how you can apply the security? Yeah. yeah so with uh, REST controller, basically, uh, like we do have uh, onto all the REST controllers, like in our microservice architecture, we have the security implemented at the gateway level itself. So we are using Spring security for that. So there we are actually, you know, at at the time we get a request uh, from uh, from the UI, we actually validate the user uh, credentials, and based on that we actually return a bearer token or authorization token to uh, the requesting service. So based on that uh, authentication token, every time we hit a REST API, we actually provide the authorization along with the bearer token. Uh, which we used to validate uh, for for any incoming request to check if it is uh, uh, authenticated or not okay okay uh, okay good thanks for that uh, uh, what you i mean recently like what you have learned new Apart from your project work in five six months. Okay, so apart from my project work, actually, if you talk about uh, you know apart from this uh, daily coding and development part, so I've been actually involved into some kind of Scrum Master related work, so creating Jira's and all. And apart from this entire you know technical thing, I have been learning cooking nowadays because of lockdown. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. In your employment uh, summary, I can see you started your career in 16, Jan 16, right? Yeah. So almost now three companies. This is this might be your fourth company. So why four companies in five years? Yeah, so that is I think just uh, just a count uh, basically. So I started with Arisent in 2016. I almost worked for two and a half years. And uh, if I speak honestly, so I was like, okay, I should uh, you know look for something uh, challenging and things like that because there I have been working on to the same project. So I thought about it. So just to see what uh, happens outside the organization, how how other companies work. So I changed to Wipro basically. There, unfortunately, I was on bench for the couple of months, and then uh, they were actually trying to relocate me to Chennai. So because of that, uh, I I didn't wanted to relocate. So I got a call. Uh, I just spent six months with Wipro. I got a call from a previous manager back. So I rejoined uh, Arisent. Now it is Altran, and I think by the time I leave, I will be having the experience letter for Capgemini. So basically, by the end of this month, uh, this will be actually transition to Capgemini. So Altran is your same company as Arisent? Yes. Yes. So why you are now looking for change? Then it is going in Capgemini, right? So why? Yeah. yeah so uh, the reason is I, I haven't actually worked into Altran as such. 
for almost four and a half years i have been working with cisco uh, on the client location itself but i'm not sure why uh, because of some organization changes or whatever it is so cisco has actually taken back like uh, most of the projects so my current project is also ending on first week of april so because of that uh, we have been earlier on told about it and since it's a networking uh, based domain so most of the projects are there into c c++ so this one uh, big project that we are actually working on since the past 2 years is majorly on to java so uh, mostly like i'll be on bend so that is why i was uh, looking for a change so i'll be pushed back to altran basically